Mikhail in Moscow, Russia, writes to me. I still, I mean, given all the trouble and all the craziness going on in Ukraine and, oh gosh, so sorry for all of that. I, you know, there are periods during my life where things were pretty much at relative peace throughout the world, and I, I really treasure those. And then, of course, yeah, okay. Anyway, Mikhail writes to me and he says, hey, Paul, I just watched your old video <laughs> where you are speaking about the prototype of your new speakers and tell that baby bear speaker will have only 350 watts. Hmm, I'm not sure uh, what that actually means. Sorry, uh, what only? How did it happen that in the old days, 20 watts was enough and even a lot, but now 350 watts are only and for the youngest model in the line? Okay, well, I'm not sure exactly what video you were watching and wh <laughs> what speaker you're referring to, but the question still remains, and it's a good one. Back in the day when, oh, 50s, 60s, when stereo was kind of in its infancy, loudspeakers were what we would call efficient high sensitivity 90, in the mid-90s, 97, 98 dB. And that means that you only need a few watts, 10 watts, 20 watts at the max to drive those speakers. And that was true for many, many years. I remember my father's system had, I think he had like a 30 watt vacuum tube amplifier, and that was big. That was really big back then. So most watts, uh, uh, most amplifiers had wattages in the 510 uh, range, didn't need a whole lot of watts. That's because the speakers were very sensitive. Over time, and, and part of the reason for that was because at the beginning of all of this stuff, manufa well, there, were, there was no such thing as solid state. We didn't even have transistors back then, right? And building big tube amplifiers is certainly possible. I mean, even in the 20s and 30s, we had huge radio transmitters that put out thousands of watts, and those were vacuum tube based, but that didn't trickle down into the audio industry. So in the audio industry, we had small amps and sensitive speakers because that was easy, and people just weren't into these big giant power amps, you know, filled with 20 tubes, which is, you know, it's what it takes. And over time, the weaknesses of that system became apparent. And those weaknesses are that as a speaker gets more sensitive, you start having to make compromises. You're not able to put out as much deep bass. You're not able to uh, do quite a number of things in a very sensitive speaker because in order to make a speaker really sensitive, um, it's, it's a combination of low mass cones, um, the way, uh, you know, a lot of windings, uh, and they didn't have particularly heavy magnets back then. So they made a lot of compromises, sonic compromises, in order to get that sensitivity. If you listen to a loudspeaker from way back when, you know, it's, it's definitely cupped doesn't have much bottom end, not much on the top end. They weren't very good. In order to get a speaker to really reproduce with authority and power, the low frequencies, the, you know, everything that we would assume today as standard or accept as standard, you're gonna need to put out more power. We're gonna have to wind the woofers differently. We're gonna have to make the tweeters differently. We're gonna have to lower the impedance down. And in order to do that, we need more power. So the two kind of go hand in hand. More power allows us to build better loudspeakers. When we have better loudspeakers, we're able to make better sound. And that's basically it in a nutshell. Okay, all right. Thanks for the question. Talk to you later.